And now I think we're live, because I pressed the fucking button on YouTube. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another uh, week, another episode of the number one tier and shit show on the internet, the Creature Conference. And uh, Bargase, where are we coming to them live from this week? What part of Rick Priestley's expansive mansion? Uh, Rick Ple Priestley's oubliette. Ooh. Oh wait, we did that last week. Did, did, isn't that where you came from last time? Uh, well, I didn't know. I didn't know if you were, you heard me. To be honest. So, oh right. <laughs> I, oh wait, I that was you did it in text, for... right? You did it in text. Good. Okay. Now we got it in voice. Say, Rick Priestley's oubliette. Anyone yeah. who doesn't know what an oubliette is needs to go watch 1986 The Labyrinth with David Bowie in it. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, Hydra, you join us. Good man. Yes. I Are still you... have some some issues with my camera and I don't know why it's blinking like hell, but I'm oh, working damn. on it. Okay, uh for anyone right. who... I, I don't even have a camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, we're not we're not forcing you to turn your camera on, but Hydra has to we have to rattle his cage, he has to dance. Dance monkey. Yeah, what the fuck? Um <laughs> So yeah, for anyone who missed it, uh, we have a special guest joining us this week, none other than High Fleet Bargast. I've pulled up his uh, Instagram profile, and if you're not following him, you should definitely be following him, because he's got some shit hot, cool, weird, very different Tyranid conversions that you should definitely check out. And as we saw from last week, um, what, what? What's that, Hydra? You are crazy loud. Oh shit, sorry. Thanks for the warning. Hold on. Let me see what I can do about that. I think I was... Is this better? A bit. Okay, I was standing right in front of my mic. I'm going to turn this down a bit. One sec. Uh, oh, but... So I turned it down for the stream, but I don't know if it, I can adjust it for you dudes. Hold on. Oh, I got an idea. Is that any better? Hello? I guess... Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yes, uh, High Fleet Bargase is joining us this week. And for anyone who was here last week, you know that we have now dubbed High Fleet Bargase the official David Attenborough of Tyranids. And if you weren't here last week, um, but you've been on previous streams, you may have seen Bargase uh, contribute various pieces of Tyranid fluff opportunely. Because apparently he has an exhaustive memory for Tyranid Fluff. So thank you for joining us, Bargas. No problem. It's always a pleasure to talk to fellow components. Great. <laughs> um, so this week we actually have a theme. Because, you know, we had a theme last week and we got so high on ourselves that we figured we'd try for a theme again this week. And that theme is how not to build a hive tyrant. Which... <laughs> Might sound like a weird kind of idea for a theme, but we promise that we're going to explain what the heck's going on. Um, so I set some homework in the chat on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm wondering uh, if you could pick a non-standard Hive Tyrant, something like an old One-Eye, a uh, Red Terror, a um, Death Leaper, something like that, a, a one-off individual character that was specifically a Hive Tyrant. We're not talking Swarm Lord. Let's pretend the Swarm Lord doesn't exist. What would Damn you it. pick? Well, you know, I mean, you could say Swarmlord, but that's boring, man. I want something crazy, different. If you could pick, like, a weird and wonderful um, Tyranid, sorry, a weird and wonderful Hive Tyrant, a unique Hive Tyrant, what would you choose as your weird and wonderful unique Hive Tyrant? While you're thinking about that, I'm restarting because uh, my camera is giving me fifth member. Uh-oh. Sorry to hear that. Well, I guess like everyone who anyone who's Honestly, here can. I uh... take him off the top of my computer. <laughs> hey, I've got him. Oh, he's he's right on the middle of my screen, so it might be my fault. My fault too. Um, while people are thinking about that, they can post in the chat. Flynn, do you want to give us a rundown of what inspired? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, a drive. I was mentioning old one eye as an example of a unique individual Carnifex. So similarly to how the Red Terror is a unique individual Ravner. And um, Death Leaper is a unique individual uh, Lictor. What would you see for a unique individual Hive Tyrant? 
So let us know what you think in the chat. We've already got one answer of Taj333, a Ripper King. Ooh, that sounds cool. Uh, Taj, let us know what, like, what kind of abilities would that Tyrant have? And, like, would it look different? Just share that with us in the chat, because that sounds really cool. If you uh, look in the um, the gallery I, I linked you to, there's the um, old Swarm Tyrant from the Sabretooth games, which is spawning ah, a bunch of Rippers. Let's see. I can pull that up. Uh... Oh, is it? Oh, it's this guy, right? Oh, I don't know if you can. So, if you're following along on um, on YouTube, Bargas, it's going to be a little delayed, my video. But that's probably the best way to see if you have the YouTube open, but you mute it to see like the stuff that I'm sharing. Because if I try and stream it back through um, Discord, yeah, it breaks everything. I'm... Oh, I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna say you've got you've got the one I was talking about the um, one with the enormous elongated head and then the uh, sort of um, creepy flesh sack on the front. Also, massive flesh borer gun. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, people, feel free to contribute your unique ideas in the chat. Flynn, do you want to? Start us off by talking about what inspired us to do this episode focusing on how not to build a hive tyrant. Yes, I, I like this part. So, if you have ever actually had a look at the hive tyrant on Games Workshop's website, they've used the same one in the community articles recently. It's going to be on the new box for it, and it's on the and it's been on the page since the on the retail page for purchasing a higher tyrant since it went plastic and if by magic it is now on the screen you're looking there for a... the the 360 or are you looking for the uh oh, i'll go for this bit first there's okay, a specific yeah? part that is actually not been added onto this hive tyrant here i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him a hell a hand by making this very yeah. large you're not gonna be able to see anything else for a second and I'll also give you a hint by only showing a certain area of the hive tyrant. But can you detect anything that is missing from this hive tyrant? Uh, intrepid Tyranid expert viewers that should be on a normal hive tyrant. Your stream hasn't gone messed up. I've made the whole thing a picture of a hive tyrant. People in the chat, is there anything that you can notice that's missing from this hive tyrant? It has no gold. Uh, <laughs> What's like that? Sphincters. No sphincter. There's definitely no sphincter. I'm talking about something that's on the sprue that is not here. I'd say get a picture of the sprue off as well in a bit. Oh, uh, uh, Peter Hansen has the answer. Oh, does Peter? Did Peter Hansen already hear this? Did we? I th he's in the group though for it. I think. I don't know, Peter Hansen. Did you have this spoiled for you, or did you actually just guess it? Because we have been talking about this before, but I don't know if you were there for that conversation. Yes, Peter Hampson has got it. This hive tyrant is missing a very small piece right... I'm going to put it right above the Creature Conference logo. If you look at the base of the hive tyrant's neck, and just above the uh, the armor plating on the chest, the rib cage, you can see that the, the area where the collarbone should be is suspiciously flat. And that's because Games Workshop doesn't know how to build hive tyrants. So, Flynn, were you the one who noticed this? Or did someone tell you about this? How did this I become an idea? This, I noticed this like over a year ago. Wow. And I thought it was like, okay, maybe it's like a small thing they didn't notice, they, they've forgotten about. And then it was like, the new, the new nids are coming out. And then I noticed oh, something wait. else. Oh, I should go find the Warhammer. Do you have a, a link to the War? Oh, no, it's going to open it. Hmm. Which one? The, the Warhammer Control Community Box? article? Which one? <laughs> it's about five. I don't know. Whatever one you want. Just hit it, hit it me up in the uh, the the March 18th yeah. chat with it, and I'll, I'll open that up as well to show that it's... One... Go ahead. I was going to find the Combat Patrol Box one because it's on both sure. of it. Uh... But yeah, it's uh, it's been a case that they haven't put it on 
for so long and it's it's strange because it's not just on the one body it's on the flying hive tyrant it's on the oh, it's on the swarm flying hive tyrant too i think i can pull that it's, one up it's missing it's missing on the sw flying hive tyrant it's missing oh, on the swarm lord huge. and it's missing on the walking hive tyrant it's uh uh, oh, here we go. It's a strange uh, one. Oh, it's hard to see there. But yeah, I think it's definitely missing on that flying hive darn. Yeah. And this is on the page where they sell you the model. I do think it's because potentially it it was painted without its head uh, as a separate sort of um, assembly, yeah. and they left the clavicle off, and then. And, popped it back in and thought no nothing more of it and nobody's noticed because they don't sort of quite obsess over turnids as much as some of us well, might why would they know? leave uh, the clavicle off for painting like you put the clavicle okay so like for example i have a hive tyrant here i've put the clavicle on you can take the head and you can like totally oh wait that's not the way to hit put the head in you can totally fit the head in around it and over it try and put a head in and then try and put the clavicle in Oh no! Okay, right. Oh, that's what you mean. Sorry, I thought you, you meant that like. You can't... I thought yeah, you meant you they put... left the clavicle off because it would impede the head. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's the other way around. You need to have the clavicle on first before you put the head in, because otherwise you can't put the clavicle in once the head's in place. Okay, so you think so that one they... way or another? Ah, you think they built it? Them. They p built it. They put the head in. And yeah, then they try to put the clavicle on. Beep boop. Hello? Oh, I hello. heard us uh, echoing through your connection there. All right. Great. So what What? What on earth was German speakers as a clavicle? Oh, my God. I didn't know Marco was going to actually, like, jump in. Marco can't uh, video stream with us today because... Uh, Nick, what? Just a very quick thing. Uh, yeah. Your Discord image has got your login with QR code. That's being shown onto the stream. Oh fuck! Yeah. Me? Wait, but Nick, top right. But that's. Oh. <laughs> so what do I do? There we go. That's um, better. It's gone. What do I do? You've got the article up now, so it's it's it's, it's left it. Uh, just later on in post, just delete. <laughs> Wait, does that mean that someone can log into my account? I don't know. There might just need to be the app. I don't really use the QR code, but. Maybe you just need to go back and uh, delete the thing from the stream. Yeah. Are we all gonna die? Well, it had yes. the whole. It could just be like I could just use the QR code to log into my account with it because it didn't have your details there. But yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open that same link in a different thing and see. If... No, what the hell? I, I like tried to copy your link and it, it took like a weird like Discord long link. time. Yeah. Now I can't get to that link anymore to go look at. Okay, well this is stupid. Um. All right. Oh no no. Well, no no it's fine it's fine that's just like a login with a QR code like it will still need like you need to be logged in on the phone, app. Don't yeah. 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 So, okay, so you have to be logged in anyway. Woo! Yeah. Okay. Almost docs myself. Always a good always a good time on the shit show. So uh, yeah. So here's the uh, the article for you. What's that? So, uh, Flynn mentioned this is the, what the heck? No, wait, that's the wrong website. Um, <laughs> wrong website. So this is the, uh, the article on the Warhammer community page that, uh, this is the most recent appearance of the Hive Tire. Nope. Yes. <laughs> this no. was when they sent us that email and they were like, surprise, new Tyranid silhouette. It's like, that's clearly a Hive Tire. And they linked us to this combat patrol box, which, does that Hive Tire have it? So the does. one on the, so this high tyrant, the flying high yeah. tyrant, doesn't have it. The one on the box art though, is a completely ah. different hive tyrant. So yeah, the flying hive tyrant definitely does not have the clavicle there. And then that one, oh my god, is that? No, is it? Is it what? Oh my god, I missed that that part of the story. I in all of our conversations about this. So yeah, as you can see, the flying hive tyrant doesn't have it either. And Flynn, what is this hive tyrant on the front of this this box of this brand new box from Games Workshop? Can you tell us more about that hive tyrant? Because he looks a little funny. That it's got a different paint job, doesn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, you know what? That paint job does look a little different. It looks a little bit Why better, doesn't that? it, though? Why is that, that that, high, that paint job looks so different? Well, it's done with different paints to what they use now. Look at the uh, veins on the head. It's very blue, and the skin is a lot brighter. You know what? That looks kind of familiar. I'm going to see if I can find a picture that looks very similar to that on Games Workshop's yeah. website under the Hive Tower that you can currently buy. Let's uh, let's go let's go look at it. We got the plate winging one. Look, still no clavicle. We got standing one. Oh, look, close up, no clavicle. Oh, even on the right there. See that like face close up? Definitely no collarbone thing. And uh, oh, here's the big one. And it's flying. Oh, look, 360. Oh, hey, wait a second. This looks kind of familiar. What are we seeing here, Flint? We're seeing the fourth edition Metal Hive Tyrant. <laughs> Taj got it, man. Taj is like, yeah. is that the metal one? Yeah. That, yes. It, I'm not hit the bash on it, but it is just the whole, like, the only high tyrant that has the clavicle is the one that's actually built from the metal casting, which can't not have the, the clavicle because it's fused as part of the kit. So, so Flynn, let's just say that I was I was being a dick, and I'm like, hey, how do you know this is the metal one? Prove to me that this is the metal one, and not a plastic hive giant painted in a different color. The blue veins. Oh, because you mean that when you go back and look at the, the hive giant that was released, when the pewter one was released, this is exactly how it was painted? Exactly how it was painted. The, it's wow. also the only, the only other bit you can slightly say would be the toe claws mm -hmm. because they they could be put there in a slightly different position to what the plastic ones are and the plastic ones have to be in that way the only way you could definitely say it's not also if you try and if you do me 360 and go all the way around to the back for me yeah it might be there that when it comes up you should you should have like two distinct lines going all the way from the front to the back on the carapace Oh, you mean where they where it joins? Where it joins in, yeah. Uh, maybe they just did a really good job. No, no, there's no, no lines there. Be because where on the new ones, there's actually like there'll be gaps on the actual vents themselves because they come yeah. in separate pieces. So that's where you'd see a distinct bit because there's no actual gaps at all. Yeah, it's one clean piece on the model because there it's not any slips or anything with it. Yeah. It's the easiest way to tell it apart. But apart from that, it's it's not as easy. Also I feel like the tail angle is a little different. But maybe I'm maybe I'm just imagining things. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. So, uh, okay, guys, are, are you seriously, uh, seriously uh, getting getting excited over Games Workshop shitting on us? Or <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, stop it! He is getting excited over a clavicle, whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> a clavicle. About what? A clavicle. A clavicle. Bargast, you are David Attenborough. Can you describe what a clavicle is? <laughs> Uh, it's it's just your collarbone. Okay. So, they means little key. What? Oh, what That's amazing. <laughs> I was wondering, and I didn't know I was wondering. Well, until if you right think now. if you, well, if you, I think the uh, the Death Watch have a uh, piece of war gear called a clavis. I think it yeah. is. Yeah. So okay. it's just it just means key, little key. Mm. Um, so you know, random piece there, of information no you didn't really need. Yeah, so there's no Flemish content in, involved at all? In, you think clavicles is a sexy here. thing? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Damn. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Um, yeah, I, so... I joined, I joined, I, I joined this, this evening only for the clavicle. Thanks well, for nothing. You want to get like an extreme close-up on a clavicle? I've got one right here. Okay. Uh, so, here's the little bit that comes on the Hive Tyrant. 
um, it's it's you can see why someone would miss it because it is very small. And uh, if you look at this hive tyrant, uh, it is assembled properly. So it's got that little bit right here, just above the uh, the armor plates. And this clavicle I have because I didn't actually put it on the Death Leaper. So you can see here how um, that top <laughs> piece of the, the rib cage is flat. That's where this is supposed to go. So yeah. like you can, I'll show you. If you've never assembled a hive tyrant before, this piece is completely separate. It's just a little piece on the sprue. And you literally take it and you glue it. It's not going to fit well because I've sculpted stuff on this guy. Uh, you glue it right there. Yeah. Just above the armor plate. So you can see that. They both got it now. Um, but my problem is that I made this guy a bunch of gribbly tentacles for his head. So when I try and put his head in with the clavicle there, it gets messy. So I left that off. But you're not going to know that I screwed it up because... Well, you will know a bit. Maybe I've got to sculpt some green stuff in there now so that you won't know. But uh, mostly it's covered up by um, the feeder tendrils. So I intentionally left mine off, but you're supposed to add it right there. And it, it kind of like completes the whole rib cage structure for the hive tyrant and continues these kind of growths around. And especially since the, uh, since the hive tyrant has like... Uh, he sort of has this weird chin, chin beard... Yeah. thing yeah. going on but uh there's you can easily see that that there's something missing yep yeah but uh yeah so i was i, I just thought about the uh the the uh so we we are pissed right so we are you know but on the yeah. other side it's a tyrant yeah. but we are uh, always pissed. yes that's that's true uh, it made me think of the the time when they had uh, the um, the bolter of the Lehman Russ uh, glued upside down on the tank. Oh painted yeah, that. yeah, painted that and had that on the on the box for I years. Need to help, damn them. Yeah. So it's it's they 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 just don't care about enough about units. They also don't care about enough uh, about. The others. Okay, so that's not... you make a good point, Simon, that it's not just Tyranids that are getting the, the short end of the stick, but it is kind of crazy that this hive tyrant has been around since like 2013, 14. Yeah, rough. I think it was when the blast yeah. came out. But the crazier thing is that oh. they put the old metal hive tyrant on that brand new box. Well, is this an entrance to us talking about how Tyranids get? The short end of the stick once again. This well, because I, yeah. I'm all about, I'm about that. Yeah, this is kind of like... Anyway, sometimes we talk about how Games Workshop doesn't really care about Tyranids, and if you wanted to yep. be salty, you could possibly read this as proof, further proof that Games Workshop doesn't really care about Tyranids or doesn't really pay that much attention to them, but it's probably just an honest yep. mistake. But anyway, we just thought it was funny. We wanted to share it with folks. However, Yay. not to just leave everything on a salty note, um, the reason that we asked uh, Bargast here tonight, other than uh, his witty personality, was to do a bit of a hive, di uh, hive dive? Shit. A deep dive on <laughs> hive tyrants. That's where I was going with that. A hive dive. Uh, what is cool? Sounds good. Sorry, I've been into the German beer. Although it's actually Canadian beer. Or sorry, German tea. It's actually I'm, Canadian tea this time. I'm all, I'm all about hive diving, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> you are a diver. So, yes. So, we're going to do a hive dive on hive tyrants. Uh, so that we can all make sure that we all understand the anatomy of a hive tyrant, how it evolved, and we can make sure to never forget our clavicles on our hive tyrants. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Flynn, is there anything in the chat that we should hit up from this discussion before we move on? So, uh, Peter Hampson's pointed out the box art of the High Tyrant appears to be of the old metal model given its repainted gun from the 5th edition decks. Uh, it's a uh, floppy, I said. It's a, it's a, oh, in version to the clavicle. Uh, Grim and Grimly has turned up. Hello, Grim. Hey, Grim. Hello. 
it's uh, probably ask, it's is the problem they didn't put the clavicle on or is it, the instructions aren't good enough for GW to even give them any attention really it's oh. more of is it in the instructions that's something i didn't it's check in the, it is in the instructions i don't know if it's in the new instruction guide because obviously i haven't gotten the new box yet yeah but have you actually seen the new box for the hive tyrant no no so in the new box the new box art for the hive tyrant yeah uh let me just get the image up it has the old forge world capillary towers what yeah they've got that on the box art as well as uh what looks to be a tyranid drop egg they've had it on there no like a so back years ago they made a in one of the white dwarfs they did a article of how you can create your own sort of like yes. unit drop pods it was the most hilarious thing because they used uh they used lictor arms yeah for the build oh. and it was amazing and marco and i own one of those each <laughs> mm-hmm. because they were they were the trophy for taking part really? of the, yes of i the, totally uh, forgot to, to say it right now yeah yeah. We we went to Nottingham to attend to the uh, Tempestus Fugitive Second Tyrannic War event, yes. yeah. and uh, these were trophies handed out for uh, different things. So the, oh. so so what they actually did was uh, the studio made built one of those and made casts of them oh. uh, to use as Tyranid scenery. Did anyone tell the studio that they're not allowed to cast your, uh, Games Workshop products? <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> Huh? What's that? Can I sell it for a dollar? Yeah, sure. You can try. Oh, we'll sell for more. But no, the weekend sign was totally awesome. And yeah. Jim, Jim from Australia was coming over just for the weekend, which was all kinds of amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the best gathering of high fleets ever. Well, well until Marco hosts us all in Berlin, that is. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, because Nick, then you're there Nick as well. Was, Nick was missing, but um, it it was pretty awesome. I tell and you. Was missing as well. He wanted to show up as well, right? Who? Yep. Tom wanted to show up. Oh, Tom. It's the second thing Tom's missed. He was going to show up for um, Games Day Toronto. Yep. Yep, I remember. Then he got sick. Too bad. Yep, indeed. Bad indeed. Right. Okay, go on with your rant. As no one has video, I've like messed up a thing so people can see who's talking. It's not very exciting, but... uh, (laughs) Those are ice. You know, you have my video, right? I do? <laughs> you should. Well, why is it? No, it, it's not showing your no. video. Permissions. Permissions. Oh. No, 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 no. Maybe. Now it's on. Uh, there you go. Well, now that I've done this, okay, great. Now, okay. Who cares about all my work? Yeah, no Thanks. more. Nobody cares. Yeah. Uh. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Dear is voice of the off. They're actually on the <laughs> the box art as well for yeah. the new ta- the new high tire new high tyrant box. Yeah. Uh, so brace yourselves for people going. Go. New tyranny terrain is coming. Look at the background. They've got quite a few of them. Oh. No. Yeah. Oh, wait, That's not I think coming. It's, it's on the combat patrol box too. Yeah. It's the same someone. Background. I can see the uh, lictor egg. Yeah. Someone tried to say it on that one. I was like, no, it's not. That's when they need neckbeards like us to tell them how wrong they are. Oh, it's just finding the article in the White Dwarf it was in, because you know as soon as it gets put on uh, Warhammer Plus, that's going to get shared around so much. Hmm. Anyway, so are, we starting to, are we starting to run now, or is Vargas starting? Vargas is going now. Yeah. Why? What are you, do you have something you need to say, Marco? No. Okay. 
Vargas, are you ready? Uh-oh. Apparently not. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Can we hear me? I can hear yes. you. Yep. That's fine. I mean, I uh, I've I could just keep talking for the rest of the night. To be fair, so just sort of <laughs> mute me when I've when I've talked too much. Really, I think is the it's really the way to do it. Okay. Yeah. So go uh, go, go. I asked Vargas to put together something about uh, the history of like the tyrant design and like the evolution of it over the years, and he pulled together some really great pictures from like old school codexes and stuff like that. So yeah, you go for it, buddy. Uh, I think Flynn has a couple of um, of uh, the pictures obviously up, and uh, yeah, they are, they've just appeared now. So uh, I think the easiest place to start is um, is really back in Rogue Trader when they uh, the name Hive Tyrant was applied to what we would call a Norn Queen these days, uh, sort of immobile hermaphrodite progenitor beast whose death would prompt other tyranids to morph into new hive tyrants um which is a concept that survived uh to modern day tyranids in the form of the uh the hydra effect which um is the psychic death scream of a norn queen prompting other hive ships to carve and high fleet hydra itself which sort of weaponizes this reaction to psychic screams by having Tyranids engage in psychopathic violence to whoever caused the uh, the uh, tyranid to scream in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the hive tyrant, as we know it, is probably first written down as a hive lord, and there was this substrata of hive lords that would run the day to day of tyranid affairs. All of this was in basically sort of two or three paragraphs in Rogue Trader. Yeah, uh, and this was back when the the default tyranid was this weird centauroid low G adapted beastie that walked on the middle pair of hooved legs um, with uh, dexterous forelimbs and a sort of prehensile rear legs with um, webbed feet. Are you trying uh, very hard not to say the name Protonid so that I don't get triggered and yell at? I, 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 I was being I was being polite about it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Flynn, well, you the... jammy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, the protonid itself doesn't have the um, the secondary eye stalks. I don't think on the side of the head, which tyranids were supposed to have as a standard, oh. but never quite, never never quite made it into the rest of the uh, the design. I don't think. Um, although some of it does remain in the tyranid design language, like the hooves, although they were on the middle set of legs. Yeah. Um, but the the idea being that this thing was basically existed in a low G environment most of its life and more or less got around uh, in three, 360 degrees. But from from second edition onwards, they are defined and given a model and a more or less fixed appearance and role. And I think the, the page of images you've got up kind of uh, describes that second edition uh, Tyranid, best, best defined, I think, by the um, Jez Goodwin concept art in the top left of it, which is not as visible as it might be, but it it's basically the uh, the imagery from the Gothic and the Eldritch book, which is dated around 1994, I think. Oh, that um, old, yes. 94, okay. Yeah. And um, this, uh, basically, those are the three three or so primary images of the of the Tyranid from second edition. Um, although the Gothic and the Eldritch has a nice little. Uh, sheet that lays over to give you some of the details that Jez comes up with for why it's got a spike there and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, Mark Gibbons, I believe, does the Tyranid on the right with the Barb Strangler alternate build. God, I love that picture um, so much. Yeah. Yes, this is one of my formative Tyranid yeah. pictures. Uh, exactly. I, I think uh, I would agree it was, it was mine as well. Um, and as usual, Jez provides uh, puts plenty of thought into why it uh, it looks like it does, rather than he's just added this thing because it looks cool. Although yeah. no doubt that does form part of his process. So the the double row of spines up the back of uh, a tyranid, a tyrant carapace, are uh, supposed to serve as heat sinks and radiators for mm-hmm. the uh, the souped up metabolism of the tyrant, um, because in Jez's 
sort of imagination, Tyranids run really hot and have a, a, a really fast metabolism fed by um, sort of uh, some sort of internal biological reactor, um, which explains sort of why he's he's created this um, design language for them, which includes all these big blades and, and sections, not just to look mean and to stab people, but to actually serve a purpose. Yeah. Um, it has... Uh, a, I also think um, he notes that it's got these psychic uh, symbiotic elements on its head. It's not quite as obvious as the later tyrants with their huge swollen bonces, but it's got the sort of the cranial cowl and symbiote indicated on the concept art and a bit more prominently on the Mark Gibbons piece. And I, I always thought this was more like a biological equivalent to the psychic hoods that the uh, Imperium uses. Nice. Yeah, that makes, uh, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Oh, jo Jones, uh, Jones. What? Sorry. Switch off yeah. your microphone. It sounds like you're beating drums there. Yes. There we are. Blessed silence. Um, the uh, I think the um, the Tyranids also tend to have a bit of a, a skull-like appearance at this point, um, appropriately barbed and equipped with sort of mandibles, which kind of mesh an arthropod and vertebrate design. Um, and yeah. I particularly like D Dave Gallagher's approach to the mouths of Tyranids, kind of strangely in this scenario. He basically, uh, if you look at the the big second edition codex picture um which is the main image i pasted the others onto you can see that there are multiple rows of basically giant spikes in terms of its teeth um it doesn't have any any particular sort of uh, differentiation in its in its teeth they're all just big horrible spikes and it's got a huge mouthful of multiple rows of them and it's really just there to basically fuck anything up that it bites rather than than do something because obviously our teeth are all adapted for different things some for grinding some for for cutting and that sort of thing uh, a tyranid's teeth are simply there to uh damage things for want of a better phrase um, and they, they they don't even have a gum anymore right like they're fused to to this skull like feature yes it's a it's a sort of a kind of a, a reptilian um aspect or a crocodilian look to it almost or or even again like the skull it's all it doesn't have any soft flesh because yeah. uh their teeth aren't aren't going to be made of sort of enamel like ours which needs to be um uh kept hydrated otherwise it denatures and cracks and that sort of thing it's probably made of the same sort of pseudo chitin that all their weapons are made of so they really don't care it's it's just there to to harm things and i and i think um that this idea meshes very nicely with me i don't know whether or not it was why he drew them like this but um the idea that they don't have a mouth for conventional evolutionary reasons anymore um you know we end up with a, a head because of a, a process called cephalization the idea that all your sensory organs and other important processes end up in the lump at the front of a beastie because you can find things more efficiently and, and eat them if everything designed to help you eat stuff is in the same place. And this is supposed to have been how actual um, intelligence evolves because you get all the complex processing equipment in the same place and inevitably it w starts working together to manage it. So the, the point at the end of that tangent is that I like them having these ridiculously beweaponed heads, which are actually impractical for eating or communicating or even really breathing um, because they don't need it. It's just another appendage to be repurposed. And as the army list said in, in the second edition, the, the tyrant weapons were claws, jaws, and a bad attitude. Um, <laughs> yep. And, and, that, and that sort of sums up this, the, the image of the tyrant um and what it does on screen in if you to use the term uh in the background and i think the first time we actually see one on screen is when uh, uh to quote the codex a mighty tyranid lord huge as a dreadnought thunders into the ultramarines third company and just cuts three of them in half uh with a single blow and then cripples a dreadnought in close combat which at 
back then was obviously quite a dramatic thing rather than something everybody does every Thursday. And, uh, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it, it kind of, it, it, it kind of um, takes a different turn 30 seconds later as uh, it gets shot in the face repeatedly by Captain Fabian of the Ultramarines. But um, the actual section describes this quite dramatic and explosive clash of two swords, one giant alien scimitar and one power sword before Fabian um, becomes the hero and puts a, you know, an entire clip of plasma into the head of the, uh, the hive tyrant. But I, I don't honestly mind that because back when that happened, this was, this was just cool. You know, it wasn't, Oh, look, another space Marine has killed another hive tyrant effortlessly. It was, um, it was this sort of last ditch effort of, the third company as they were getting completely shredded and uh yeah it feels desperate to... like yeah, for some it... reason i'm thinking about that scene from um astartes where like the astartes are trying to like get through to those like psychic dudes and they're just like trying so hard and doesn't the like sergeant guy like burn his hand off shoving a plasma pistol through like a, a force field or something as like a last desperate effort Yep. Yeah, he, he blows his hand off, and he's and it doesn't doesn't really do anything, and it doesn't really do anything in this. He kills the tyrant, and yeah. a bunch of tyrannids run off and go insane, and then the rest of them just try and murder the rest of the Ultramarines, and they end up losing, uh, having only a quarter of the company left alive after resorting to shooting their own into their own formations to stop the tyrannids from from killing them. Um, and that's the the other line from the Codex that is always at the forefront of my mind that. Not even the Terminators can stand up to the Tyranids in close quarters. Um, Terminators back then also being something that you didn't kill every weekend, um, rather than the thing that uh, they are at do the they, moment. Do, tier, do, do you know, Bargast, if... Because um, it always blew my mind that Terminators had tactical dreadnought armor. Is that still what they call it? Yeah, yeah, it's still... You know, the, you, you're called a... You're wearing a, a... You're a Terminator if you wear tactical dreadnought armor. Okay. Um, but they you know, or they called the that was the original way they they phrased it. Uh, oh the Terminator shit! Squads. Symbio Joe just showed up and said, "So did we start early?" Uh, yeah. Sorry, Jimbo. Symbio, this week is messed because North America sets their clocks back, forward, whatever. I mentioned it in some of my story posts, but I don't think everyone saw them. Anyway, uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Bargast. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that that was really cool, like tactical dreadnought armor. I'm like, these guys are like, they're armored like a dreadnought. How badass is that? It's I'm just getting dr so much, so much nostalgia waves over me hearing all that. I can yeah. still remember the times when Space Marines were cool, and I just recall why I played Blood Angels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the name tactical dreadnought armor really is cool. It's just, it's, it, it just sounds awesome i think is is the only way to say it and i, I don't Probably. think they, i don't think they use it often enough they go with terminator more this more these days um but uh as far as the the, the tyrant goes yeah it dies but so what um it's it, it dies killing the elite of the elite space marines as do the rest of the tyranids and uh at that point, you you don't really feel like the Tyranids are being done dirty, so to speak, uh, as you might do later on. Yeah. Um, I think the the other notable engagement of of second edition is probably the um, the Hive Tyrant that leads the final assault on uh, the Eldar craft world, the Andon. Yeah. Um, most mostly because at that point the Tyranids have have sort of lost after destroying most of the Eldar fleet and wrecking this entire um, planet-sized starship uh, only to be rescued by the uh, the Eldritch Raiders and the Tyranids rally after losing their entire fleet in a, in a final um, assault led by a Hive Tyrant which uh, back in 2nd edition is, is basically just a Hive Tyrant that they can't stop until uh, they send the ghost warriors against it, led by the Avatar. And at that point, the Avatar was also something that uh, was particularly uh, devastating and cool and wasn't really beaten around the head every five minutes by somebody to make them look cool. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Avatar basically piles through and skewers the Hive Tyrant after it smashed its way through the rest of the Eldar. And obviously later on, they they sort of twist this a little and the uh, the Hive Tyrant, rather than fighting the Avatar, gets him beaten up by a dozen Carnifixers um, and then gets stabbed in the head by... Um, the Eldar special character Admiral Yiel, Uriel, Uriel rather, yeah. uh, with the Spear of Twilight, which they've obviously rewritten several times into different versions. I actually prefer it where the Avatar beats him, mostly because it's this clash of second edition Titans, yeah. um, back when second edition Titans weren't sort of, were a little smaller. Um, um <laughs> But uh, as far as the model goes, I th I think it did a really good the model itself. I think it did a good job of reproducing the art as best you could with the technology available at the time. And even at its smaller scale, it's basically the size of a dreadnought, and it was a, quite an intimidating guy to put on the tabletop when everyone else, Certainly. you know, if you put him a Put him against the Imperial Guard. Um, you know, you've got this Imperial Guard officer who, who looks like sort of he's going to get eaten alive. And um, <laughs> e even a Space Marine doesn't really look like he's got what it takes to take on a Hive Tyrant. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was something you would you would face with an Avatar, not with just some guy. Um, and the, 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 the mm. always thought the funny thing was that it had slightly more options than it had bits for, but you never really. Saw much of them, and you could give it a devourer yeah, or a death spitter. Oh for example. yeah, uh, and and it could have a spine fist, and and yeah, really, yeah, given the the scale they, they of the Tyranny, the Marco, the Tyranny Warrior versions. What are you? Some babbling from Marco. Marco, can you hear oh, us? Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Do you want to mute while you're? Yes. Thanks. Sorry about that, Barnes. <laughs> it's turned out you're telling up a school child. You're going to say, no, no stress, ra 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 random German interlude, that's fine. Um, sorry, sorry. The, and, um, the, uh, and given the scale of the Tyranid Warrior weapons, you could probably have converted it up quite easily, but I just, I never saw such, to be fair. Um, although, uh, it's as easily as you could convert any metal model in that era, which was not not that easy, to be fair. Um, I mean, one thing I do miss about this early model and concept is it doesn't necessarily have every limb fully integrated into a weapon and yeah. has the asymmetrical weapon loadout, so you don't have forced bilateral symmetry where it must you know have I love that. two weapons. Uh, yes, indeed. You've, uh, I'm going to say you're just doing one now, funnily enough. Um, and... Uh, and also, if the the cover shows uh, the top right limb completely detached from that venom cannon, for example. Yeah, that was the uh, interesting bit. I was just looking at that. I'm like, you could just grab something else with that hand. You know, which kind of which kind of uh, fixes the problem of maybe having a blind spot on your right hand side, really. Um, but I think my ultimate. So I look at this Hive Tyrant design as the one that has been iterated to produce other Tyranid designs, from the sort of biological plate armor sections on its shoulders and its uh, clavicle, yeah. um, and it has sort of chitinous pauldrons and articulated plating, to the big radiator or heat sink veins on its back that eventually become the classic biological exhausts. And is this the, the first time uh, we the saw big... those? Uh, I, th I, th I think this is the this is the first model that actually gives it these um, big spines instead of um, uh, an actual other detail on its carapace. I think it's also... Yeah, that's cool. I looked... forgot about that. Yeah, you know what uh, I, I mean... just noticed? It? noticed we, we kind of uh, had our way with the uh, Mortex, uh, with the Parasite of Mortex the other week. Yeah. Um, and uh, I feel like I was kind of put off by the model because it had like uh, carapace uh, plates where uh, where like the area the, where they were kind of sprouting from uh, was uh, apparently carapace as well. Um, and when you look at the the well where the neck or the hood of this uh, tyrant is, 
So there we have the back carapace, and on that there are more like smaller carapace plates. So we have carapace on carapace, which is something we uh, oh, don't yeah, see a lot. In the middle there. Yeah. And I, yeah, it, it, it feels like it's a nice nod towards uh, second edition now, not like a bad design choice. Interesting. Yeah. 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 I think I think it brings. I think it's funny how much stuff they cut out from this and then have come back to and i see no reason why anything that's in the history of the tyrannids can't remain part of their their um, design language i mean they they sort of built in in third edition the excuse to um use it all uh, by describing the uh, tyrannids as having evolved their forms past carrying weapons into fusing them more with themselves and i, I think that was just the, we, the thing they and added and then for the next like six seven generations of tyrannids they're just holding guns yep. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's it's, it's um they, they added it and then they just sort of moved along um because we obviously don't evolve quite as fast as it turns out um so <laughs> uh, for me i think it, i think it's it may be not the, but it is a er uh, tyrannid design, as in a sort of a tyrannid design from which involve includes all the imagery that you might expect from a tyrannid, and from this tyrannid you can draw a line to most, if not all, of the other tyrannids that we have, yeah. um, even though it didn't necessarily come before the tyrannid warriors because they were i think 1991 is when we first see them wow um 91 because uh i think space that's crusade? the date of the uh so yeah the space crusade um white dwarf is dated around then so i'm i'm guessing it's about 1991 um and so it's not the first but i think it has heavily driven the imagery since and i think it also supplants the three body segments of the old tyrannid warrior design and we get that body shape with a torso and an abdomen and a pelvic sort of uh, setup rather than the three arthropod style body segments that the Tyranid warriors have. And obviously yeah. when you, you move you move into third edition, they're gone. You don't have that anymore. You've you've got the the hive tyrant body style. Should we move into third uh, edition now? Because you have the, I, the third I think, edition. I, yeah, I think it's third edition time. Okay, uh, the only thing I wanted to mention about this is that, to me, this doesn't feel ripped off from any other sci-fi property when you look at this Hive Tyrant. Like, it looks pretty original. Um, is there, like, Marco, I feel like you have greater knowledge of old rubbery sci-fi space creatures. Do you know of any, like, rubbery space creature that this Hive Tyrant design could have been ripped off from? From movies or something? Hello? Marco might not be there. Never mind. All right, let's move on to third edition. Is anyone there? Of course, there? as we move on... Okay, you're still we there. Move on to as we move on to third edition, it feels like it promptly hurls all this out the window and gives us a brand new Metal Tyrant that um, doesn't really share much genetics, to, uh, if you'll forgive the pun, with the, uh, with the previous one on the first glance. Um, yeah, so... so much so, that I couldn't actually find an artwork image of the the third edition Tyrant that wasn't completely warped from what it actually looks like. Yeah. Um, so we've really got here, we've got the Adrian Smith front cover of the third edition Codex. Yeah. Um, and we've oh, got yeah. a, bunch, a bunch of Forge World Hive Tyrants, um, because... Uh, I don't think I can find an actual third edition piece of artwork that shows the the metal hive tyrant in art, um, apart from a couple of background images that uh, weren't really of, of good resolution. And I think that says it all about that tyrant, really, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> you know. Well, why I mean, do you need art when you're just ripping off Alien? Like the art's all right there. Yeah. Now, you see. I, I thought about that and 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 I it is clearly going with the giant crest. Um, this one was oh, this queen. this third yeah. edition tyrant was sculpted by Mark Bedford, 
who is oh, a great artist that. and he's a great and he's a great sculptor. Um, but the plastic warriors are still sculpted by Jez. Um, and they've stood the, t- the test of time rather well, I think. Yeah. Um, well, although they did get they did, yeah. they did get a quick re sculpt uh, or re cut uh, rather. Am I allowed to interrupt? Um, because yeah, I'm old enough to know Mark Beth Mark Bethel back in the day was just a training sculptor. He was very, very early in the sculptor, which became much, much better when he used to work for Fortschwell later on. Um, I assume back then they had short on, shortage of staff or were short on time or something and had to ask Mark to just do something quickly because he was famous for doing things quickly. But he was very early in his career, and you can really tell with the models how lumpy they are uh, with hindsight. I'm sure it wasn't Mark's fault because there was all, all obviously some kind of pressure on him. But yeah, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much where I, where I'm going with this. In that he he actually did a a bit of a um, interview in White Dwarf talking about. Uh, how he'd done a bunch of the Tyranids and, and and a couple of other things, and he does mention that he was also supposed to do the Biovore, but there wasn't enough time, and they handed that off to um, Diaz, I think it was. Oh. Um, and uh, and and it, it, you just you're just looking at the model, you get the impression that there was something that led to this model just not quite hitting the mark, when it really should have been the 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 centerpiece model that smashed it out of the park sort of thing yep. and yeah. and served the purpose of the other uh tyranids and when what, I, when i'm re- what, what i would love to know is yeah what i would love to know is is uh like we have this incredible piece of uh, second uh, third edition cover art um yeah. and uh, when when you look at that and when you flip open the codex and then you see the uh, the the uh, Hive Tyrant. It's like the Eddie the Queen, you say. Yeah. So I, I, I pretty much. Well, this is my codex because I started tunits with that, um, and I remember looking at that cover for like for ages because it was just beautiful and marvelous. And then you flip open the book and you see like the 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 prime uh, organism of the <laughs> of the fleet is like yes. That that other thing. So I would love to see. Uh, I would love to know which one was first. So if if uh, if they had the art, uh, the the cover done first, or if they had known of each other, or if it's just like uh, someone got Jess's sketch and tried to crank it up to to one hundred. Honestly, I'm I'm not sure. I suspect the art was done was done first. Yeah, because I. I think they, I think they gave this codex mostly to Adrian Smith, or it might have been the fourth one. I think he he kind of drove his own path when he was doing his art, and they don't seem to have really yanked the leash on him particularly much um, yeah. to 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 match a model. Um, you can see that the tyrant really just has a completely different limb configuration. It's 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 got it, it's not got two pairs of limbs one on top of each other they, they're they're on the same level it's basically completely different and the thing it looks the most like and it's probably works the other way around is actually the forge world tyrant um if you look at the head uh spines particularly the crest on the forge world tyrant looks a hell of a lot like that crest on the on the front cover and bears very little resemblance to the to the metal uh mark bedford sculpt yeah. Um, uh, and uh, one of the interesting things was they did a little uh, White Dwarf article about on why they redesigned the range mm-hmm. and and Jez talks about how he wants to unify the Tyranid range because there wasn't a army theme that you could point to and if you look at the art of the Kraken Tyranids on, uh, in third they blend into one you know, there's an entire army with a massive red carapace and a massive mm-hmm. pale uh, uh, exoskeleton, and and they actually you can almost lose track of what's in there. Whereas if you looked at a second edition army, uh, you it had a fairly predictable content, but 
it wasn't um, this this sort of flat mass. Yeah. And so they tried riot. to, they also, yeah, it was a riot. That's a good, good way to describe it. Everything was crazy. <laughs> everything was painted differently. Um, everything was quite mad. Um, and what he wanted to do was give them a size progression. So he, he made the termagants and the gaunts the same size. Um, he uh, made the um, warriors a little squatter and a little wider. And he made the tyrant taller. And yeah. so you had this progression of a sort of a big dog sized tyranid. You had the bigger than human sized tyranid. You had the human size rather in the form of a gene stealer, which interestingly, he described the gene stealers as a human gaunt hybrid as far as their design was going. Um, oh. And said if they ever went back to the gene stealers, they would add the five plates on their head, which obviously oh. they did. Um, yeah. because that, as, as I'm sure you all know, that's the sort of, this is the advent of tyranny design rules where we have five plates on the head. They all have a tail of various size and function. We're all hexapods with various limbs adjusted or atrophied. If you're a gargoyle guns, interestingly enough, it says guns were to be integrated in the original design brief as in they were all fused permanently to their limbs. But what they ended up with was doing a sort of half on half off concept um, because it didn't look right. Um, and they sort of fused them, but showed that the hand was still there. So uh, that was a deliberate design design choice. And that's also where he again mentions the fact that Tyrion is supposed to run really hot. They, uh, they you know, when they fire, steam is sort of exploding out of them and fumes nice. of, of exhaust like fumes that. and that sort of thing um which is why uh, on the on the previous picture i included that epic uh scale hive tyrant art um because uh i think it showed the uh, the hive tyrant firing its gun and the termagants firing their gun and they had this this big cloud of of steam and um and fumes and you could even see the the uh, backwards facing um uh gun stabilizer like uh like a, a modern tank cannon where it it fires a uh, an x pattern of uh, of exhaust fumes out to help stabilize the gun i didn't um, know what that was that yeah. i didn't know that's what that i've yeah. seen that and i didn't know that's yeah. what the function of that was on guns that's amazing yeah you know uh, oh. it, it basically stops it stops it from you know it, it's a bit like a, yeah. a recoil recoilless rifle or something like that it, it it stops the weapon um jumping quite so much in theory and obviously the termagant down there is is firing its little spike rifle with a, a, a spray of steam as well um, and on that on that uh um mark gibbon uh artwork uh the uh i think the the, the gun barrel which is pointed upwards is like gleaming it's like glowing and there are fumes coming up out out of there as well. Oh, it's yeah, it's, it's it's this. Yeah, it's also I think I think it's double barreled if I recall, but um, yeah. It, oh wait, it's, you mean Mark uh, Evans? This... Sorry, I'm lost. There we go. Yeah, it's it it's obviously fired something, and it, it, this this tyrant's just about to sort of cut someone's head off with its uh, lash whip or or whatever, and. Um, yeah, so basically, Tyranid weaponry was meant to look a certain way and act a certain way. And if I think I've moaned about this before, but if you look at, say, uh, the computer games that represent Tyranid weaponry, it's really boring. It's just like glowing green stuff. They don't really pay <laughs> attention to what the weapon's supposed to be. It's like, well, you know, it's biological. Just make it look like something the Zerg would Slime. shoot. Slime. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's Absolutely. just, you know... Uh, right way to sort of pay attention really um but uh yeah so and you were you were supposed to have six six limbs uh, a rule that doesn't appear to have been exactly ironclad since there's an eight limbed dragon winged tyranid tyrant conversion in the codex um, ah. so obviously rule of cool still applies they obviously thought it was too cool not to put in um <laughs> so the tyrant's basically a giant wor version of the tyranid warrior and it has this crest which in inevitably invokes the xenomorph queen um 
Now, I said I feel like it throws everything out from the previous Tyrant, and but when I go back and look at it, it does generally maintain prominent beats of, of the Tyrant design. It's got a big head. It sort of makes an effort to have the additional mandible-looking chunks, although they aren't articulated. And the big carapace of fins are there, and, and I sort of run out to nice things to say about it. It's it's big, <laughs> it looks dumb, and I honestly think they managed to get less detail on a model that should have had far more detail than its predecessor, and and I think they, they missed the mark. They tried to make it seem more brutal and monstrously huge. They exaggerated the jaws and gave it tiny eyes, but it basically makes it look thick. Um, and it misses this sense of vicious intelligence and cruelty that you get from the um, original Tyrant. Um, yep. So, you know, as a physical model, it, even my hopeless Tyranid fanboys and falters because it's just awful. Uh, the, the body inexplicably twists at the abdomen. Its back carapace is formed with these two rough ass pits plate sections that are lopsided but you know of all things it's bigger it's heavier and the legs are longer and fit at funny angles you know to the long and really heavy tail so even with these tightly fitting pegs it's got it's a bloody nightmare um and the neck and the head interface does its best to give you a lot of surface area but because it's got this enormous crest you basically you pick it up and the neck snaps off unless you pinned it so <laughs> basically i don't want to say that i hate it because i've got a load of them to put together in various configurations so i do actually like it but i can't like it more than the than the alternatives it's just not good enough i don't think and in the context of everything else they released it was just like what the hell is this thing um and I think the design was potential was far better realized in the medium of resin by Forge World um, with the two tyrant models they did. Um, it, the scored and riven carapace and the general detailing makes for a model with a much more interesting visual texture. Everything that's blunt, in other words, on the metal min miniature is barbed and sharp. And the entire model seems designed to actually be charging forward rather than the static posture it's given in the metal medium, which is just sort of standing there grinning at you i mean if you thought the carnifix was grinning i mean take a look at the metal the metal one it's um they were all it's, grinning it's really think, quite weren't they all yeah, grinning in third edition really, and like we were merciless about that yeah, yeah i mean yeah. even the raveners uh, uh, have got this sort of rictus grimace to them which funnily enough i'm perfectly fine with an in second edition metal tyrants because they've got the sort of skull look but yeah. the um, the uh, it just seems kind of weird in in third but, for some reason. But but you know there's a very simple explanation for all the, the, this kind of stuff. Back in the day, the design studio and the sculptors and the design artists used to smoke a lot more pot. Oh, and <laughs> of course they were grinning all the time. They were pretty happy. You know the Harlequins got invented. Well, like whoa, jazz. I'm, so I, I think the real explanation is that. Casting technology was not up to snuff, and you couldn't have an open mouth with, with teeth hanging out and cast it properly, but also weed, probably. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, uh, and well, I think uh, one uh, thing they uh, abandon, I, so if, I was going to say, one thing they abandon um, is the is the mouth, um, is, the, is the teeth being outside uh, how do i put this basically at the front of the mandible you would have a row of teeth and then you would have a gap at the back um and they sort of dump that uh to to have a mouth more conventionally shaped um yeah and i i, I think that i absolutely know where you're going because looking at those second edition uh designs it's so easy to see that they like they did not have any gums it, they were just pointy needles stuck to you know the the, the skull shaped thing that they call head and uh as as the newer designs go they try to uh give it a more i would say believable like realistically uh like yep. an animal uh appearance and with that they're losing uh the the purpose of those teeth like uh but, absolutely but you know what for some yeah. weird reason, us old time Turin players from remember third edition as our happy time. Isn't that weird? Well, it's because the rules. It, is, really it cool. was a happy time. 
yeah. it was a happy and we time. Got the plastic because it, 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 you know, it made you, it, it gave you options, and and it had, as as you say, the plastic gaunts. You had the plastic, plastic tyranid warriors, which were, yeah. frankly, you know, a, a brilliant kit that stands the test yep. of time. I think. Yeah. Um, and the gaunts and the rupees. I think the issue was dinosaurs and xenomorphs became the priority in terms of the design identity for the the heads and the and the and other aspects. Certainly, the leg yeah. there looks straight out of a, a sort of theropod dinosaur, um, and yeah. I think that overpowered what was originally there. Um, I mean, I mean, don't uh, don't get me wrong. I love the Forge World. The Forge World Hive Tyrant is still brilliant. Uh, like I said, everything's barbed. It's charging forward. I mean, it, if you see on the 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 artwork there, it even has the segmented tail of of old Termagant designs. True. Um, which which is a brilliant thing that I think more is needed, and that that obviously yeah. harks back to the. The uh, the the articulated look of the third edition, sorry, the second edition tyrant, which has got lots of armor plates along its tail, and and it just works, I think. Yeah. Um, I know. Also, uh, uh, I think we got some info on size and mass, which is an, always a mistake because nobody really pays attention to it. So you get a tyranid hierophant that weighs less than a Lehman Rust tank, um, <laughs> which is obviously. <laughs> You know, even though it does have these giant spikes, which meant it'd sink into the ground instantly, making it weigh less than a tank, and then telling me it's the biggest tyranid ever, and is supposed to be the epic scale hierophant redesigned, is a little irritating. Um, I mean, they also gave the uh, the Forge World one the nickname of Overfiend, which um, I think is quite pertinent at the moment, given that the Swarm Lord has just bitten the Overfiend's head off in Oct in the Octarius sector, which is uh, what, who's the was, a, was a pleasant. The Overfiend is the Orc uh, Warlord who's in charge of the Octarius sector. Uh, which is, and he, he, in in the Rising Tide book two, he gets his head bitten off by the Swarm Lord, or rather, he's he gets his br head chopped in half, and then the Swarm Lord eats his brains after a wow. long fight, uh, and after the Swarm Lord gets chopped in half initially. Um, so uh, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, yeah, the, the the swarm lord basically um, hunts him down and and starts off with a big a big uh, uh, con to sort of make the the overfiend think he's winning, and then uh, they have a bit of a back and forth, and the overfiend kills the swarm lord, who then respawns out in the fleet and comes back and uh, <laughs> with a, a t comes back with a team of heavies and um, and beats him up, and um, so it's, there's a bit more to it than that, but that's yeah. basically it. Uh, so technically, the Tyranids have won the Octarius uh, War, or at least made a real dent, yeah. as we should have, yes. Um, so uh, it also doesn't have a weaponized tail because it's um, supposed to be more easily adapted to flight. So it it basically works um, like a uh, a halter on a on a on a Tyranid. Oh, sorry. On what a, on is a halter? Where... You said the word halter so, last week, and I didn't. I don't yeah. know what that is. If you look at insects, that, that some of them have two pairs of wings and some of them have a single pair of wings. And the second pair of wings uh, is what's called the halter, which is basically this funny little, um, let's call it cross between a sensor and a, uh, a sort of a balancing mechanism. And okay. basically it, it moves ar moves around in reaction to what the wings are doing to help the, the creature balance itself. Is this like a so, dragonfly, uh, or are those actually all wings yeah, on a dragonfly yeah. and not a halter? Uh, it it de depends depends on which creature you're looking you're looking at. There are a lot of different wing configurations in uh, in arthropods. Um, okay. So uh, the um, so it's a pretty reasonable explanation for why it's got longer legs as well, because it's also adapted for running, and a long tail yeah. is is quite useful for running as well. Cool. Um, it's just not that reflected on the metal model, which just sort of stands there like a lump. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, as, as I've mentioned, the, the head crest, I am positive that somebody was looking at Adrian Smith's art when they were doing that head crest, because the three uh, spikes on the back are just not present on the metal model, and they are very distinctive um, in, their, in their configuration. And 
I can only think that either there's a piece of concept art we haven't got that shows mm -hmm. that, that that we just didn't do anything with the metal model for, or Adrian Smith's art is the concept art uh, for that. Um, yeah. The only thing I think it's missing, perhaps, is is that it hasn't got any mandibles, which I'm vaguely obsessed with, it sounds like, some days. Um, so, and it shares the issue with the metal version in that it looks like this big bruiser and a killing machine, but it's it looks a bit animalistic. So it's big, dangerous animal more than intelligent, coordinating leader, mm -hmm. uh, psychic leader. It, it doesn't have that element, I don't think. It works really well as a killing machine, but less so as the thing that's supposed to be telling everyone else what to do. Yeah. Um, and I, as I think I mentioned, you, you just you just can't find any artwork of the of the third edition one that's that's any good, and it it just feels like they didn't bother, and then um, suddenly uh, it's almost immediately replaced in the grand scheme of things with a metal version of the updated version of the original Tyrant. So should we go to um, fourth edition now? I think I think we sh shift along to the next next phase. Let's call it. Sure. So I just brought that up now. Catch um, up soon. I mean, yeah, I, th I think the metal version doesn't last that long either, really. Um, oh, sorry. Did you know. say you wanted to see the metal hive tyrant? The the old metal no, hive no, tyrant no, from uh, mid-2000s? Because I, mean, I got one right here that I can show you. <laughs> I can say, funnily enough, I've got one on my desk as well. There's, there's one right here I can show you. We can do a nice 360 view of it. <laughs> indeed yes it's it's not like it's not still there apparently um yeah, i mean right. it's obviously on the shelf it's on the shelf somewhere isn't it in the uh, in the studio when they take photos and it's nobody's painted another one because you know you only paint yes. one or two high tyrants you don't paint sort of 14 versions of them because we don't have 14 hq choices do we uh, anyway moaning, really moaning aside that what's that um uh, the, they really quick they have painted two new Hive Tyrants uh, when they did some uh, contra how to paint contrast and how to paint in the standard standard way for the Hive oh, Tyrants. Yeah. They were actually built correctly. Oh! But they haven't done anything with them. Oh, yeah, they've just sort of shoveled them off to the side, haven't they? Yeah, so sort of like, why um, haven't you used those ones? I don't know. Perhaps it's because they paint them differently for when they're being photographed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um... And I don't know whether or not they've uh, they've they've been bothered to just paint them differently again. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like I said, the metal one doesn't last a long li amount of time either, except for where it sits on the shelf in the studio. So we get this new new Tyranid design that is basically a, a decent update of the original metal. It's bigger, it's meaner, it's plastic. So if there's anything you don't like about it, you can change it a lot easier. Um, I am of course missing my precious insectile mandibles. So I just add them to any Hive Tyrant because it's plastic. Uh, lost as I am to the depths of a nostalgic obsession. Um, but part of the reason I'm vaguely obsessed with these, incidentally, is because I like to think of them as potentially conductive elements for Tyranid Bioplasma. In the nice. same sense that the old Screamer Killers use their claws with electromagnetic fields. Yeah. And also potentially for what, uh, what should I phrase this, a sort of haptic manipulation of psychic energy. Which that would be cool. um, I uh, I sort of um, I think was born in my brain from a novel called The Red Knight by uh, I think Chris Cameron I think it was where a species of eusocial uh, sentients manipulate magic with their insectile mandibles rather than making hand gestures uh, and I thought it was a particularly cool aspect that might work with Tyranids so rather than gesturing dramatically with your hand to throw your brain missile you uh, sort of you know flex flex your flex your jaws and send a wave of psychic energy or something at, at somebody well you know um, i'm a big but, fan of that because of the dominatrix and all my crazy ass it, Ooh, it's got a psychic array for focusing shit yeah exactly i mean there's there's got to be you know these these big spikes have to do something they're not just grown there for the fun of it so you know you can yeah. theorize it's like eldar gems if there's an Eldar lump, a lump of something on an Eldar tank, it's a sensor because that's what Eldar stuff looks like. Or it's a, a probe, or it's a battery pack, or something like that. Hydra was going to say something? I Sorry, Hydra was going gonna... to... I just have that image, uh, or this little scene in my head, where 
uh, two space marine scripters are standing in front of like a like a hive tyrant, and uh, he suddenly starts waving with his claws and things, and like uh, they're standing in front of him, uh, like ready to battle, and one of them whispers to the others like, "What is he doing? Like, is he?" signaling us is he trying to communicate is he like and then the the warp blast hits them and they just explode you know it's more yeah fun more funny in my head yeah well i'm gonna say it's it's you know why should why would a tyranid wave his hands around he's he's just gonna sort of kill you um yeah, yeah i gotta say well the the big spikes on on uh, someone mentioned in the chat that the that it's very judgmental to say around a chaos player but if you look at the third edition codex for chaos it mentions that the um the spikes are actually supposed to be in favor of minor chaos gods um oh. and who have uh particularly particularly interesting sounding names we can obviously look at that later um but um the the tyrant itself uh i miss the aggressive profile of the second edition one but i think the vents offer more utility as a concept because we know they serve as exhausts now for supercharged internal processors um uh, tyrannies run really hot despite the codexes telling us that nids have extremely weak electromagnetic signatures so they're very stealthy so that's a, a bit of a an interesting one how they how they manage that um they they pump out Magic. yeah I'm gonna, Chris! yeah you know we, we robin Chris yeah, ruining we're, we're everything very... no sorry yeah um they uh, they also pump spores out of these things necrotic or otherwise and yeah according to the background the, the, for, for hive retcon? yeah 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 well they 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 do all sorts out of these things um they're, yeah. they're exhausts but they also they also pump spores out depending on which sort of tyranid is using them uh according to the background for high fleet gorgon the tyrants and the toxicrines um use the uh the structure as part of um uh, breaking down the genetic material of their op opponents and creating bespoke toxins inside the carapace vents oh. and then transmitting it to all the other uh, high fleet gorgon critters around via the synaptic link which then use that genetic design to create poisons that are uh, specified for whatever it is they're fighting Whoa, um, so um, I mean it's uh, it's a great model but one thing that always occurs to me when i'm building it is how there's very little you can do with it unless you get out the clippers um in terms of posing it yeah because of the con the configuration of the uh guns particularly because you've got an arm pair that is always assigned to any gun larger than you know well to barb stranglers and the venom cannons and practically speaking the ammo supply arms shouldn't really be stabilizing these guns particularly much unless they've got some sort of muscular strength to the ammo feed which i suppose they could have but then if you look at the harpy they're perfectly happy to fire a, a big heavy gun with and stabilize it with one limb and yeah. there's no reason you can't expect a, a a tyrant shouldn't be able to do that um and i think it hampers the carnifix the tyrant and the tyranid warriors by making them have this gun carried across their front yeah. because the guns are so are so large that it isn't it doesn't always seem practical to expect them to do much uh whilst they're carrying it and a lot of the art tends to to bypass it by making the ammo feed quite ridiculously long and a lot yeah. longer than it is on the model because otherwise this tyrant isn't going to be doing much with those that pair of arms. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is in the in the link I sent. I don't think there's any point looking for it because there's so many images. But there's a couple of weird tyrant images. Uh, so there was I mean, one, one I that I the... hoped you included because you thought it was so ridiculous. Tell me that you put Probably. this one in because it looks so bad. <laughs> I, oh, I, I think there's the 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 one with the kraken. Is it? I yeah, that's the one I pulled up. With... Yeah, and I just I just don't know what they were thinking with that one. They weren't. Um, they not, were <laughs> it that not only is the head just just fucked up basically. Um, it it looks like it's sort of 
shy certain key genetic elements to make it actually function. Um, we've we've got this random scything talon um, in, and a bone sword, and then rather strangely, we've got guns on top set of arms, and then a, a ammo feed on the lower set of the arm, which oh God, I, didn't I didn't have a ma major problem with. Really, it just just going to make it difficult for him to do anything really. So he's 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 pretty terrible really something um, wasn't your joke um, that like no tyranid can fire straight or something like that because of the way their guns yeah. and their arms are set up yeah you yeah, can't I mean, point the gun directly ahead of them yep you know, look at look at him like the the way he's uh gangster style holding his pistol god yeah he is he's he is actually holding his gun like that because and it, and it looks like somebody i don't know who's who drew it to be honest with you um well, he, he should also, never he should never draw tyranids again well we'll I never know because they don't tell us yeah, anymore yeah i mean they don't tell us anymore for fairly valid reasons i think these days yeah. um because they got a lot of shit for um for the ultramarine stuff and i think it i think it broke them on a institutional Wait, level that? to have to so when they did the ultramarines and um and uh, what's his name? The the chap who who wrote them as the spiritual liege. Uh, Matt Ward. His name now, Matt Ward. Yeah. About yeah. when he did it, um, the suggestion was that they had stopped giving people's names out as authors and everything else like that because he he got so much shit over yeah. from from people. Uh, I thought that I'm was the story with Robin Crudace for the Tyranid Codex. And I no. think it was probably it was prop it's probably more than just Matt, but I oh, think no, it's Matt Ward it's mainly Matt Ward because he did the okay. Tyranid Fifth Edition Codex, he did the Imperial oh. Guard Codex, yeah. he did yeah. quite a few and codexes he, at the time. Yeah, and I think he's mentioned it himself on on various media outlets once or twice, um, and then deleted it. Uh, but, um, <laughs> and then yeah. people gave him shit, and he was yeah. like, "Oh, never mind." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I think I think he I think he, it went very badly, and then Games Workshop just sort of quietly decided we're not going to deal with this. Probably because a HR person said, "If you don't do something about this, you are going to be in the shit." And yeah. they can't control the internet; they can control who what they tell the internet. Yeah. Um, so if, I think this was a very uh, hard-nosed business decision to just not communicate it. Obviously, it's a bit shit for anybody who does the art, but um, most of them tend to have their art up on a um, deviant art or an art station account now, or even Instagram. Yeah. And they seem pretty free to do it as no. long as it's been published. To well, I, oh share. yeah, as long as it's been published. I was talking to Nikki about some of the art. Yeah. Like, Nikki Roulette uh, worked with Games Workshop, and she yeah, was yeah, a concept she... artist there, and she was she she hinted at having drawn concept art for a certain thing. And then I'm like, oh my god, do you have it? And she's like, no, no, it's it's in the Games Workshop vault, and it's never going to see the light of day unless they decide to. And it sounds like it would have been really cool concept art. Like, not anything that we don't know about, but just, like, a faction that she explored for them. Um, yeah, I, I I think they they keep that under their, under their uh, you know, they keep that stuff that they haven't done but might want to do something with because yeah. i mean if the, there's one thing that games workshop do is is go back and mine their background you only have to look at the Catan, who were basically <laughs> there as a, a sword and uh, a, a reference about the uh the um the perils of the Catan. and now we have and that turned into an entire sort of race of star vampires um so i can see why they keep it secret i mean uh yeah. you know remaining focused i think the um, the wing design okay. for the plastic one is better than the forge world version because it went with a uh the forge world version has a sort of bladed wing finger which isn't going to be doing much flexing to be fair yeah. um it probably would be really good if you wanted to hit something with it but in terms of actually having an aerofoil that you could uh flap i, I really don't see it working that well unless mm -hmm. you had a form of jet propulsion for example which you know maybe is something i could see a tyrant having um you know tyranids mm -hmm. don't seem to need the sort of physical keel. <laughs> yeah yeah we're all we're big fans of jet propulsion here yes. yeah indeed absolutely you know uh 
Tyranids um, don't seem to need the physical keel that you'll find on a on a bird, the sort of deep chest with all the muscle attachment points and winged bat birds, bats, pterosaurs, that sort of thing. But really, the only practical way a hive tyrant is going to fly is through, let's call it science or magic, because it's <laughs> well, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure Tyranid's material science is good enough to build the muscles the strong enough to do it and the material tough enough. It'd be flapping a hell of a lot more than would be practical. I see um, your science be... and magic and I raise you bumblebees. Well, the thing about, <laughs> bumble... the thing about a bumblebee is that it it's doing that with a set of wings that are a very different configuration. Um, but... <laughs> so b- bumble- bumble- bumblebees fly and it is... I know the story about bumblebees and insects not technically being able to fly, but they actually fly with the sort of they generate uh, vortices of uh, of air when they flap, rather than the um, aerofoil that, say, a bird does. So, mm-hmm. if you've ever seen the um, uh, the cross section of a, a plane's wing, for example, the idea is basically that the birds bring their wings forward and and up and uh, air flows over the top and the bottom of the wings, whereas a bumblebee flaps its wings like some sort of crazed psychotic to create these little vortices that give it lift rather than the, the aerofoil section giving it lift because of the airflow over the top and the bottom of them. So a tyrant could fly with that, but again, what you're talking about is an area of wing that would be... Um, dramatically larger i think um and the other issue is i mean tyranids can do anti-gravity there's there's descriptions in the background of anti-gravity for their starships so they can oh. um, you know stay in orbit strange organs which manipulate gravity i think it was described as that's my favorite um, tyranid also... explanation i want that to be like the the like the magic or science for everything strange organs how does it turn to do this yeah, i mean if, strange organs yeah if if you um if you look at when they are talking about uh the uh dark eldar trying to hack the genetics of the tyranids one of the things ah. it mentions is that the uh it doesn't work um they can't do it because the tyranids are made of stranger matter than flesh and bone i think it was Ooh. Um, suggesting that so even even the Dark Eldar struggle to do anything with Tyranid genetics. Um, so so you, yeah, you, you, say, you say when you when you take a picture of them uh, that uh, they won't show on on that picture. What was that about star vampires? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say yeah, they, they 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 could be vampires. If uh, when I was looking for some of the arse, I actually um, I actually found a, a saber tooth games card. With a bunch of Tyranid warriors on, and it literally just says "vampires." That's the what? name of the unit, vampires. Yeah, oh. it's. Uh, I'll. Uh, no, the, the, I'll the one... no, it, no, it's just some Tyranid warriors. They're actually oh. drawn with guns that look like they're technological guns as well. I don't think mm-hmm. everybody really paid quite as much attention as they might have uh, yeah. to everything when they were doing the uh, the saber tooth game stuff. To be fair, uh, uh, I, I was quite... I was referring to uh, Lovecraft. Because they're uh, like, it, it's it's a pretty Lovecrafty thing to say. Um, well, they they have organs, and it made me think of the Migo. Um, yeah, I was going to say that the sort of cosmic horror aspect is 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 something that, um, like I said, I think uh, some of the Tyranids could do with a little more of. So if the reason it flies is because fuck you, physics, I can fly, um, <laughs> is, is a good. It is as good a reason for me as any, really. Um, you know, it's a bit like the uh, the, the the Space Marine sh- um, uh, ships. They they just sort of oh, go fuck you, uh, streamlining. I, I'm flying through main force. So um, I mean, I think I mentioned in the in the chat earlier was that my actual problem with the 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 flying hive tyrant is that um, the head configuration that you get. Not necessarily the design of the creature in the background, make, um, is that the uh, the tyrant head. Well, if you look at the Haridan or the Hive Crone, they have what's described as a, a prognathous head. So the main axis of the head is parallel with the main axis of the body. Okay. In other words, what it means, 
is that the tyrant's head is more or less at 90 degrees to the primer of the axis of its body, ah. which is basically if we took it. Yeah, a standing tyrant, draw a line from a position between its feet up through the top of its carapace. The head looks at a 90 degree angle from that line. So you you can't really see the, the tyrant achieving the angle of attack, if I can use the phrase correctly, I'm not sure if I am, for flying, mm -hmm. that, uh, which is basically a, t a term about how you fly, uh, the angle of where you're flying um with its wings it, it's quite difficult for it to achieve that angle for longer distance flight rather than just flapping in the spot because it would have to tilt its body so it can't see where it's going it's basically just looking at the floor because the head and the big carapace doesn't let it tilt its head back unless it can extend yes. its neck out and then fold it back a little and i really don't think it's got that that um in its physiology um, which is what I was saying about a tyrannid I would, a tyrant I would like, is I would yeah. like one that is very clearly adapted to fly rather than just, here's some wings, have a go. Um, <laughs> which sort of is what it feels like with the, the tyrant. And I appreciate the option, and I appreciate the effort that they went to making it feasible to have it in the kit. Yeah. But objectively, I'd expect a pure flying tyrannid to look more like a gargoyle or a harridan yeah. um and it's clear that they know that when they design the gargoyle and the harridan yeah. and the uh, and the crone uh the giant foot, foot claws are to be fair awful um they're sort of justified if, if they're primarily a weapon and perhaps the dew claws it's got can extend to offer some sort of stabilization and when i'm having to justify it to myself i think that maybe because Tyranids have been described as having a biomorphic resin that forms the cutting edge of their claws and their armor, which can react to a psychic stimulus so they can change the configuration of a surface. So this oh. big thick spike could conceivably adjust to allow for grip rather than just sort of a big spike and let the nid actually roost on something and perch. But I think it's a big ask to think that that was considered when they designed it. Yeah. To be fair, I don't. Oh, think, you, you, I don't. Okay, you're you're not talking about the uh, the um, Forge World Tyrant, but on no, the, about that, that plastic kit no, one. No, no the, the 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 Forge World Tyrant has what you were. Um, I think it's got tridactyl feet, so it looks like yeah. something you might you might see on a on, on a, a chicken. On a, on a, yeah, on a chicken. Or, um, I was going to go with a theropod dinosaur, but a chicken is more <laughs> or less a, the, the, the end result of a theropod dinosaur, so we'll go with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, I, I, was, I was just lost because, yeah. But no, no, no. It, but the, 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 the plastic hive tyrant has just got these big daft spikes that yeah. know, would probably yeah, really, yeah. really, really kill something if it, if it swept down and stabbed them. And I, and I wonder if they were maybe going for the idea that, like the Harridan, a flying hive tyrant never lands yeah. um, because the artwork that we're looking at at the moment is, is the, uh, the hive tyrant that's this called big teeth from the Scarrock swarm, um, which uh, is, they tell you about in the, uh, one of the painting guides and the orcs call it big teeth uh, because basically um, nothing can land on Scarrock or stay still because it's this weird desert of uh, acid. So the orcs basically oh. uh, survive by driving and never stopping. Yeah. And uh, the Tyranids survive by uh, everyone has wings. Oh, and, okay. Uh, big, big teeth is what they call the big hive tyrant, and they call the uh, uh, gargoyles flying teeth and the zoanthropes floaty zappy death. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, so, so you perhaps can't, they, can't they go argue for... with orc logic. See, orcs no, get us. No, orcs understand tyrannids. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're fairly clear about tyrannids. They're those horrible, gribbly things that murder us. Um, which uh, is again um, something I'm very happy to do to orcs. And obviously, we won Octarius, so Yabu sucks to the orcs. Um, uh, but generally speaking. Um, the, the plastic one I think is great um, and uh, I did upload what I th I was kind of hoping might be on our fourth version um, on the uh, the imager 
uh, account I sent you of the Rising Tide cover, Tide. which is yeah, that's the the Octarius um, book oh. that came out. It's called Rising Tide. There's a lot is of aquatic like a, vids in it. Is it like a a long band or no? No, What's it's the. the uh, I'll hang. I'll hang on. I'll just send you the direct link on um, on the thingy. Uh, oh, it's about aquatic nids. Uh, there's lots of aquatic nids in it. I've just linked you in the um, planning Discord. Okay. I think I may have. Done um, that, but I don't know. I'll yeah, big, big red one, and he's about to horribly murder oh, someone. Oh no! Some okay, I missed that one. Okay, I'll get that one. Uh, oh wait. Oh no! It's gonna open this in the wrong program. Shit. Because you you send me the link, and then it just shows me the picture. I'm like, well, that's that's helpful. I copy the link. Well, I copy the link. Okay, here we go. Hopefully, I don't dox myself again. Oh. Let's see what happens. Nah, you didn't dox yourself. It's just like a. It, it relates to your specific uh, app. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So, Ooh. um, I really, I really rather like this one. Um, I think it sort of has the best of of both worlds, and and I think it actually sort of. Wow, I never really uh, looked at this. This is a really sexy tyrant. Yeah, it's it's sort of got lots of spikes, but it doesn't go crazy like some of the 3D printing guys who get a bit excited. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. There's not a square inch of their of the the body that doesn't have some giant thick doom spike on it. Um, yeah. So I think, like I said, I think it has the best of. Of both worlds, you have a um, uh, of the second edition and uh, the third edition and the fourth edition. Uh, you know, it's got long, spiky um, claws. It's got really uh, lots of stuff from pretty much any of them that you can think of, and it's got that crested head that gives it a link to the warriors and the raveners, and basically any big tyranid with a big brain has now a, a large triple spiked crest with a um you know it's basically like the conversions everybody's doing with the zoanthropes of, yeah but it also like tyrants. blends very well with the um with the the head carapace and the shoulder carapace is like they, they're very they seem to like all those spikes yeah, work well works. together for me yeah yeah it, it works and they're and they're really long and thin and i i may occasionally express the really long and thin concept in some of my stuff and oh, yeah, I, I i think it see spindly but obviously it's clearly not spindly it's like a tyrannosaurus rex claw you think it's just this useless appendage attached to it but then you realize it's attached to nine tons of angry uh carnosaur sort of thing so it's probably yeah. not that small um and you know and we don't have just one thick lump of a of a an ammo feed it's got lots of weird tubes and really long oh who's doing what spiky spiky looking venom cannon and yeah. uh, honestly if you look at the gut the gaunt right at the bottom left of the image as well that looks amazing um Ooh. you know it's it's yeah very stylized but and and it's but it it all it gives me hope that we're not going to have art that is slaved to the models for the rest of our lives um, yeah. and they've obviously moved well away from that and I also maybe hope that they might think to maybe give us another tyrant model sometime in the future wow you know, I would not expect get, that that would be amazing you know, you know it, it looks good and hell there's probably a something behind it that might be a, a another tyrant but anyway I, I've never seen this before this art before I can't find it anywhere else and um, I'm reasonably confident it hasn't been uh, published anywhere else simply because I, I spend an awful lot of time thinking about Tyranids and I feel like I might have noticed it. Um, no, it was on that cover, so I think right? that's It was a... just the Octarius book? Yeah, it was just the Octarius book. And I mean, it's called Rising Tide, I think, mostly because um, it's uh, a good way to use all the um, the concept of the Tyranids as a tide that has overtaken Octarius. And mm -hmm. they also have quite a lot of aquatic nids in it. There's um, there's some there's some bits of art that are very, you know, there's this big imperial navy. I mean, as you know, a wet water navy yep, yep. Uh, boat. It's it's very 
very sort of Thunder Child versus the Tripods look, except it's a, a great Cthulhu looking aquatic nid monster. Um, Damn, maybe they, I need they to have get this aquatic, book. Uh, well, they have aquatic mega swarms, they've got various cool bits of art. Um, one of the, the fun bits is where there's this planet with this toxic acid ocean and all the Tyranids land in it and get dissolved and everyone laughs and, and is, is glorious uh, and happy because the Tyranids have stupidly landed in the water and then um, sort of a couple of paragraphs later the Tyranids surge out and surprise everybody because it's it's just an acid lake you know it's that's that's Thursday for Tyranids really um, <laughs> and they, they, they you know, they've adapted and you know if they can manage to keep acid blood on the inside then yeah. you would feel they could probably manage acid blood on the outside so then they yeah. eat everybody and and move on so i think that's a good a good uh, bookend for for me ranting about tyranny perfect um because it's it's hopeful and it's not me just saying and we're never going to get another one for the next 20 years which is where i i feel i am <laughs> realistically yeah. but uh, no, you know, i wasn't expecting that and know. that's that's a really good point that i i haven't thought yeah. like i kind of assumed that carnifex is going to last forever the time is going to last forever they're not going to give us a new one but i'm actually but, a little uh, bit mad bargace that you showed me this picture because i hadn't looked at this close enough to appreciate it, it and now i appreciate it uh, and now i want it yes it's it's what you call bittersweet yes it's a really good piece of art although i note it doesn't have mandibles um the um it's bittersweet but it's it's just we don't have a model of it um so really we just, yeah, just go and make one to build it i was gonna say we can make one we have the technology yep Indeed, no that's absolutely. great so uh, yeah i don't quite know how long i've been talking but um i've i've not run out of words but i think it's a good point at which to finish yeah I thank you anyway. no this was amazing i didn't set you at very many like guides or guardrails when i asked you to put this all together but i think you you did a pretty awesome job um people in the the chat i know we've we've been kind of uh focusing on this for a while does anyone have any questions for bargace about uh tyranid like hive tyrant uh fluff history design anything like that anything that uh he's mentioned already flynn can you keep an eye on the chat and see if anything comes up yeah um, Hydra, please don't flynn? ask yeah, please don't ask when he's taking over the Tuna Shit Show, because <laughs> I feel like I have, well, I have spent quite some time with Tuna in my life, but I, you know, I feel like uh, I went to I went to a bicycle uh, to to a, to a race to a car race. Oh, you brought a bicycle to a car race? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's everyone's got different passions, though. Like. Bargast seems yeah, to know but, yeah. Tyranid fluff back to front and like the, the like evolution and all that kind of stuff, and that's really important. And then like you're a shit hot sculptor, and like Bargast is pretty good at that too. But you know, well, I was about to say yeah. I'm just I'm just shit sculptor, so you know that's the difference. But um, the uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it comes of a of um, a youth spent arguing with people about Tyranids on the internet. I suspect. Um, that's that's really where it where it all comes from. Not anything actually productive. Vargas, um, I should know this answer, but like, were you on Warp Shadow? I never signed up to Warp Shadow, but I did. Um, I did lurk there like a gene stealer, basically, or a termagant. Yeah. I just never actually left the the uh, the, the cavern I was lurking in, um, basically because I didn't have enough time to do more than lurk um, yeah. at the time that Warp Shadow was active. Um, I think I made an account a long time ago, but I never actually did anything. Um, so I was really just a just a lurker, basically okay. the skulker from the uh, from the Tyranid um, from the Tyranid uh, charts before the battle. You know, the thing that explodes out and kills everybody in the tank. So maybe it was better I didn't say anything really. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, no, I I I was aware of Warp Shadow and I. Um, I basically uh, uh, absorbed everything, but never actually said anything. So there you go. Oh, my, well, that's too bad. My, but my, you said my, you were arguing, my... so I didn't know if you were arguing on there. No, no, I was, I was arguing on other things. It was, it's um, an ill-spent youth spent arguing about tyranids versus other things. Oh, okay. So an adversarial, con an adversarial context, and 
I have a lot of lawyer genetics, so it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to have that. Uh, I think oh, okay. Peter Hampson was talking about hive tyrant horns. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think I was going to say that um, the only thing I would really like to see is 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 horns that are weaponized, other than just for stabbing things. So maybe something that conducts psychic energy or spines, yeah. actual model model sections for things like the resonance barb or the or the um, the crown of thorns and that sort of thing, um, yeah. which uh, always made me think of. The old fighting fantasy um, choose your own adventure books um, and a creature called the I think the Gong Chong, which was basically a parasitic uh, organism that sank a proboscis into the brain of something and and controlled it. And I always thought that, that would was quite a, a good idea for Tyranids sort of thing, yeah. the, the symbiotic um, uh, crown of thorns. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd like more. Uh, useful horns that aren't just a spike that happens to be there um yeah. like the the art the artwork for the nephilim king which was the um uh the splinter fleet of behemoth that fights imperial knights uh oh. it basically mentions that it tends to use that to to carve up the 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 knights after it's it basically cons the knights into thinking they're going to have a noble duel with uh, a big tyranid creature and then mm -hmm. runs out of nowhere and chops their legs off and then eats the, <laughs> the knight um, and, and basically all these imperial knights think they're going to have this this duel with a, a mighty tyranid monster and slay it nobly and then the, the tyrant just sort of tricks them and then, and then rips them out of their their armored carapace and eats them. So it's uh, a, a I like thing that. I always remembered about it. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, I, I mean the the court of the Nephilim king is just a great, a very not cool name as well. It, it's oh it's, yeah, it's, it's 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 characterful, and and I think the thing about it is that everything that the Tyranids are described as always has to be from someone else's perspective to give them the cool names because yeah. the Tyranids don't care. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to call them something whilst it's chewing your face off, you know, it's fine. It, it doesn't really care uh, <laughs> what you think. So, it still tastes great. Uh, when, yeah, when you're given a name, when when they're given names, it's because they've done something that that sort of incites that that emotion in somebody that they yeah. call it the spook or the mantis stalker or oh god, it's eating me or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm so, wondering yeah. if the Nephilim, uh, if there's a Nephilim court, like, obviously it's a Bible reference, but like, if there is anything that uh, that kind of relates to this tactic that it's employing. Uh, they, I think they, the, the, I don't think there's any mention of it uh, as a specific adaptation. I think they. The, the the reason they called it a court is because the knights basically <laughs> exist in that context so they, they call the maliceptors that it's seen with the viziers and the uh, the turvigon as I think is described as the consort or something like that um, and uh, various other bits and bobs are uh, are sort oh. of given knightly noble names whereas from oh. the tyranid perspective it's just manipulating the psychology of the idiot humans yeah. Um, which is uh, something that we see with gene stealers, but not so much with the Tyranids, unless you count Death Leaper. Um, so it's a really, it's a really neat point that um, uh, is a bit of a tangent from what I would like to do with horns, but it's uh, what came to mind. Cool. Um, I just realized the... what time it is. We're getting kind of close yes. to. Oh wait, you guys are you guys have another hour to like when we normally stop, but um... yeah. I am an hour ahead of where we usually are. Uh, uh, what were you gonna say, Hydra? Uh, I was, I was just looking up the the Nephilim um, court, and apparently there, at least due to my Google foo, it uh, doesn't you know pop up immediately. But the Nephilim are like biblic biblic creatures, so I was wondering if there was a straight reference to that. But, yeah. I, I don't know quite why they call it. The, I can't remember why they call it the Nephilim King. I think it's, um, I think it's a reference um, 
to the Bible, as you as you say. Um, uh, but yeah, it's basically but, this kind yeah. of, uh, as there's the twisted twisted mirror, and I suspect someone just came up with the. Uh, oh, it's in the Nephilim sector. That's why the sector <laughs> it's in is called. The uh, yeah, leave okay. it to the Imperials. So, not, yeah, it's just the Imperials. If you're in that sector, you're named after that sector because obviously the Imperium is the center of the galaxy, and everybody gets a name based on what we they think it is. What uh, are the Nephilim? What do they do in the Bible, Simon? I don't know anything about them. Uh, angels. They are. They're just angels. They're not like special angels that have like. Uh, like yeah, of course. Well, I would need to look that up. Like I don't have it on the top of my head, oh, but. Okay, okay. They are basically uh, a certain kind of angels. Yeah, yeah. I think they. I think they. Um, I think in the in the Catholic Bible that it's sort of a half-assed translation sometimes of giant. I think, as I recall, and sort oh. of in. Oh, I, rem- yeah. I, rem- I, yeah. I remember looking it, looking it up because of a, an author called. Um, uh, I can't remember his name. He's actually called Simon, funnily enough, Simon Green. And he uses them a lot as a reference to giants in the earth. There were giants in the earth in those days, and that was yeah. the sort of yeah. Uh, the... I, no, no, it's getting back. It's like uh, um, it basically is is part of the uh, war between angels and um, and other creatures. And the Nephilim were supposed to be uh, like those uh, very first creatures, um, which were like. Uh, and and the angels were like crafted afterwards, um, oh, okay. because the Nephilim were were like giants. But you know, I think it was wasn't it when when uh, angels had kids with uh, with humans. Yeah, Those I think that's Nephilim were created, and yeah, because and... they were like super strong and everything, they they needed to be raised, and God like uh, destroyed all of them. Yeah. I mean, speaking of horns, I think um, the the quote that I I remember looking up when I was I was looking this up from that other author's work was um, it mentions a, a a line. Obviously, everybody translates stuff differently, which obviously really helps. Um, they they place their swords beneath their heads and their shields upon their bones, for the terror of the warriors was upon the land of the living. So I think that's quite a uh, uh, an interesting phrase, you know, the, yeah. the with the Nephilim Kim having this enormous barb on its head and that actually being highlighted when they describe it. So it mm-hmm. makes me wonder if someone has not gone on on Wikipedia and had a look at that and thought it's going to have a big spike on its head and it's going to have armor plates and we'll call it the Nephilim King. And then they obviously named the sector after the Tyranid in in, in real <laughs> life in how it should be. It's how it should be, yes. I'm going to say, um, you know, we should all be named after Tyranids. We should win, really. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not, not, not that we're all obsessed with everything. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, giant evil angel monster that's going to eat you is, is what the impression the Imperial Knights are supposed to be having. Oh, okay. um, which isn't a, isn't a bad one for, for them to have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. There, there were others, other questions in the chat. So, Brett Evans has said, "Where well, his question is, uh, could you repeat all of it? Because he just got here." <laughs> no, it's recorded. <laughs> Watch it on YouTube. I'm gonna say I actually have notes, but um, I, I, I went a bit off off track on some of them. So, um, unacceptable. You know, I could always upload the notes. Um, you know, what was it three thousand words? I think the notes were. Um, oh wow! Oh my God, Bargays, this is way more work than I was expecting. Thank you. You did your uh, homework you, well. To, to to be fair, I have a lot of this sort of stuff written up, so it was a lot of it was just sort of a rearrange it in a certain order. Um, oh, good. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's um, it's not it's not work if you're enjoying it. I think is the way to describe to look yeah. at it. Um, like I said, I could I could waffle about it all day, really. Uh, well, we definitely appreciate it. This has been a good waffle. I've enjoyed it. Me too. Yeah, it's very yeah, and it's good, like nostalgic, like tour down memory lane. Because uh, my first ever model that I bought was a Hive Tyrant, second edition. 
I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say the... it's it's the model that got me into Tyranids because that was the uh, Screamer Killer, but after that, um, it, it has a very special place in my heart. Like the the original design has a special place in my heart, so I was always happy to see that with uh, Fourth Edition that they took it back to they kind of modernized that um, Second Edition vibe. Yeah, I was delighted when they did it myself. I uh, I when I go back and look and think. I was perfectly happy with the th the third edition tyrant, despite me basically shitting on it for an hour here. Um, but um, when the when the other one came out, it was it was pretty much okay. Well, you can go back in the box, and yeah. I'm going to go play with this uh, this guy. Um, and uh, to be fair, I'd uh, I'd actually significantly converted them. The first metal one I owned. Um, so far, mm -hmm. to make it look more like the the second edition. One. Oh, nice! Um, yeah, I gotta See, say there was a lot of sore. I say on. that I uh, I say that the second edition was my favorite, and that I really appreciated the fourth edition one. But it is the case that I never bought a metal uh, fourth edition one. I think I was on like Warhammer break at that time. Um, but then when the uh, the plastic one came out, I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting that. Funnily, I I never had a, a third edition one. I have one. I, but I, played... I never made it. That was the third edition was my first take on Tyranids, and uh, I played. Uh, I was heavily influenced by StarCraft that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I took one of those um, sisters from no those uh, Death Cult sisters from Inquisitor, and. Oh, yeah. uh, I know where this turned is. Her, turned her into a, a hive tyrant. Kerrigan? You made, you made yourself a Kerrigan. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Wait, I you took her my... from like Inquisitor scale? Yeah, because oh, she's. Wow. She's, 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 oh, so shit, Sabrina that's and cool. Savora, I think it was. And uh, and because I didn't have any wings, I, I gave all my Tyranids uh, wings, uh, like plastic card. Uh, transparent uh, plastic card wings to to make them insectoid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, she was sprouting those wings as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> nice. insect wings is, is the way to do it without breaking the design, the, the design rules. Although I don't think they should be considered quite as sacred as as sometimes it feels like they are. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. You know, insect wings, or or maybe a tyranid that's entirely some sort of giant flying manta uh, manta creature that just uses the strange organs to fly rather than anything else. <laughs> Marco would like uh, that. He found yeah, one of those. You know, uh, I think uh, I think there's there's options beyond. Or well, you know, just let us have a a, a, a tyranid that can teleport. Have a teleport worm uh, symbiotic oh, yeah. creature attached to it or something else like that so it sort of that would be cool. rips open a warp warp rift and goes through the warp and it doesn't need a doesn't need a warp tunnel like uh, imperials make because you know it's big and hard and just sort of goes through and kills the demons on its way through and um, <laughs> then sort of jumps out in a, i mean the thing about it is for me is who, the, who needs the who needs the warp spider when you have a warp bug right yeah, yeah well exactly i mean you, you need know, the warp then, spider then you can use... the warp bug then you can have the excuse of intercepting warp spiders mid mid uh, jump or something like that. Wouldn't that spoil the day? Um, you know, you thought you were safe in the warp. Um, <laughs> and one of the things I, um, I I like to think they could do more of is the is the psychic manifestation of of a tyranid, um, because the the gene stealer cults have the familiars, which are ah. entirely psychic. Yes. Um, so if you can make some little gribbly homunculus sort of pseudo Chucky like thing, um, <laughs> then you know I, I would I would hope you can manage to make um, uh, uh, an energistic sort of version of a tyranid, maybe a, a, a warp worm or something else like that. What do you like think that. worker swarms are? Well, I'm going to say they're, they're unfortunately not made of warp energy yet, yeah, so well, they're, they they're not be. quite. Who knows? Yeah, I would say they, they could be stranger matter than flesh and bone, after all. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wouldn't mind a purely energistic manifestation of a tyranid 
maybe oh. like a, a psychic power that that's like a. I mean, you only have to look at the the new psychic power they've got. Yeah, I'm not going to say that the whole Tyranid Codex leaks, but the whole Tyranid Codex leaked. And isn't there one where like uh, a psychic creature yeah. births itself in your brain? Yeah, it, yeah, it turns your brain into a Tyranid. And if that's not brilliant, I don't that's know what is. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, if uh, if you can turn someone, you know, who needs mind war when you can when you can make a Tyranid crawl out of someone's luggel? Um, <laughs> so uh, more stuff like that, where you know the a lot of the um, the psychic, the 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 relics have like a psychic element as well, like some sort of distributed psychic intelligence infests a tyranid and then um, makes it better at shooting and makes it manifest different um, physical structures. So bits like that I love because I think they could do a lot more with the psychic element of tyranids than they do. Yeah, I mean we are supposed to have the most powerful psyker. Um, like one of the most powerful psychers in the in the galaxy in the form of the dominatrix but you know we just get to shoot warp energy yeah occasionally when someone yeah. remembers that a dominatrix is a thing um, <laughs> we always remember yeah. yeah i can say which we can't forget here of course the number so, one dominatrix um, shit show on the internet yeah indeed you know it's funny how how many bits of dominatrix are i actually found looking through the sabertooth games cards there's two or three of them oh good um can yeah, you put those kind of if you like, if you still have them? Can you put them in the um, general chat yeah. on fifth member? Because that'd be really cool for people to see. Nick, I'll, uh, hmm? you've already got them on the Watch Shadow Flicker. I was gonna say, I think well, I've yeah, but up. that's hard to find. If if it's, if like Bargus has got them at his tyrannid fingertips. To be fair, I think uh, I think I, I I actually cribbed the Hive Tyrant concept art from your website because. Christ, I couldn't find it anywhere else. Um, oh, is that the Roberto the person... stuff or the Jez stuff? The Jez Goodwin one from Gothic and ah. Eldritch. I think it only exists on your online, on your, <laughs> uh, on your website. Look at you! No, no. The, the reality is that I wrote those articles so fucking long ago, and I think I just put Tyranid in my website a lot, so I think Google SEO is like, this guy has Tyranid and Jess Goodwin like a billion times. Let's send people to him. Uh, but... I only went. I only went four, four pages in before it started saying, "Are you sure you want to keep going?" Sort of thing. There's, there's not. It's just going to send you copies of everything else. So who knows? But it was the easiest one to find. Nice. Um, I don't have a, an A3 scanner, so I'm not about to tear up my Gothic and the Eldritch copy to get one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm sure someone's crazy enough to have done it. But, I uh, should just do it. I might have I've to. Got it, but... I'm, yeah, I might have to venture onto. Was it called P in Pinterest or whatever it's called? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. The abomination of picture hosting, um, and find something there. You mean the one that you can't actually uh, use unless you sign up for it, and it's really annoying. Yep. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. It, it really is awful, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know. All so, right. Uh, right. I think I got to call this soon, but this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this, Bargus. I I didn't think that. You would go into such depth, and I'm glad you did. It was a pleasant surprise. Yes, well, I'm going to say you can basically uh, listen to me ranting for two hours. I think, isn't it, something like that? Hey, oh, works for me. Oh, when 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 are you setting up your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I could trim this out and make it a podcast about high tower design. Like we could do that, but oh, you should. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That, that sounds sounds awfully tempting for people to start sending you emails saying who's this arsehole but um no one know, sends me emails like that it's all good they're sending yeah, those no. emails about me they're like who's this asshole oh wait that's that mr pink guy uh, no one oh. sends you emails no, no. <laughs> let's, let's stop it there <laughs> No, honestly, this has been really great. This is like I've thoroughly, I literally, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Hydra Flynn, what do you think? Me too. Can we have more in the future. All right, that's all that matters. The three of us are into yeah. it. <laughs> Fair enough. Works for me. Now, do you want to say the magic words? Bye, oh, guys. Diana please. just put them in chat, and Jay said them earlier. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell, or a tyranny will crawl out of your brain and eat you. 
<laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Thank you so much. Oh man. Oh man, I want to keep going, but I, I gotta I gotta run. Okay, so next week I think Flynn, do you know is next week we're back on normal time schedule? Like do our two countries realign? I think No, I think we're st- still off again. Oh shit. When do you guys do daylight savings time? One week further. I think we're switching times on the uh twenty seventh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, Symbio, you heard it here first. We're gonna be early next week again. Also, I think next weekend could be the nid release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this Sunday. This. I don't know. It's only because the the, the leak has happened and Hope Springs Eternal. Other, and like some creators for YouTube channels have like they do battle reports and got their codexes already. So. Well, we'll see. Be, it's either the twenty sixth or it's definitely the second. One of the two. I keep thinking that Eldar is going to come out before uh, Tyranids get it, but maybe I'm wrong. Like the rest of the Eldar? Yeah, that'd be later. Maybe you're right. I'm well, still we'll convinced see. it'll be April 1st. That's Friday. <laughs> okay, April 2nd. Um, yeah, yeah, and like that's the other thing we didn't really talk about today, but uh, the Tyranid Codex is leaked, and there's a lot of juicy stuff in there. So maybe, like, I know we don't talk rules, we talk models, but maybe when the Tyranny Codex is out and everyone's had a chance to look at it, maybe we should do an episode where we talk about really cool conversion possibilities from this cool stuff in the Codex. Or lack of. Like, the Passenger? Come on, guys. Everyone's right about the Passenger, right? Holy shit. I think there's quite, I think there's quite a lot in this one, to be honest. Of the yeah. conversion impetus i mean not necessarily conversion and you'll be able to use it on the tabletop oh yeah that's definitely it's definitely gone the other way for that yeah but who cares about that Uh, as i just said we don't talk about rules we just talk about cool shit so let's just talk about cool tyranid shit that could be models but um you know like as you say it's a long time since i gave a shit about what i could make the rules for um yeah you know just looking over my table there's not much double Uh, (laughs) venom cannons okay All right, so I'm going to call it, but thank you all so much for joining. Vargas, thank you for bringing the amazing treatise on Hive Tyrants and sourcing all these pictures. And yeah, I've had a great time. Hope everyone else has had a great time, and we'll do it again next week. Remember, next week is going to be an hour earlier than we normally stream. So in North America, or like Eastern Seaboard, that's 4.30 p.m., but in uh, the U.K., 8.30? 8.30? No, 8.30, 8.30 yeah. yeah. In Germany, 9.30. So we'll see you then next Friday. And yeah, everybody stay safe. And we'll talk some more bullshit then. So thank you all so much. Bye. Hey, you want to say bye? Hydra, say bye. Hello? I just muted himself. Know. Bargesh, do you want to say goodbye? Hello? So, it's Earthy. What? Yeah, it's Earthy.